now that we've got our budget ready for the month of April, it's going to be time to make one for the month of May. So what we're going to need to do now is make a copy of that file because we're going to be deleting and changing a bunch of things and I don't want to lose them. So we're going to go to file, make a copy, make a copy of that original file and just name it something so that you know what file it is, preferably something for the month of May. And then once we get into that file, we need to change all indications that it was for the month of April. So we'll go through and we'll get rid of all the date names, change them from April to May on our expenses, on our income. And on our monthly budget. Once we get those changes done, then what we need to do is we need to go and get rid of any of the expenses that we're not going to have in the month of May. So some of our one-time expenses are one-time expenses, so they shouldn't show up on our May budget. So we're just going to delete those whole rows. That's for the press and for the computer and for the printer, since we shouldn't have to buy one of those in May hopefully. And then some of our other costs, we'll leave them on there, but we can get rid of the numbers because uh, we shouldn't have to order any more t-shirts, inks, or transfer papers this month since we have a bunch in stock. So we're just going to delete that information and then just put in zeros for those. And then we lost our equation when we deleted that. So we'll just copy that back up so that we're still getting that included in our balance. And we need to also fix what our budgeted was for our rent and our utilities. Since we know that the numbers were different from last month, we can now incorporate those as our budgeted costs. So we'll change our rent to 900 and we'll change our utilities to 800. And then we don't know what our variable ones would be, so we can remove those. And we'll enter in for this month, let's say that our costs were, since we overstocked from last month, we'll say that our costs are 40. All right, so now you can see because we put the equations in, that's updated everything for our expenses. Now we'll move on to our income. All right, so before we move on to our income we're going to add one more expense we're going to add an expense for advertising so we're going to insert a row above that last row and we're going to call this advertising and that's going to be a fixed cost and we're going to say they're charging us 350 dollars and the hope is that if we advertise we'll get more sales And we're just going to copy this equation up, fill that space in. And so now it's updated our budget. So now we can move on to our income. And our income for May is not going to include those initial investments. So we're going to have to get rid of those. So we're going to select those two rows and we're going to delete them. And that gives us our new budget. Although we are hoping to sell more than 340 shirts this month, we're still gonna budget the $15,000 because we're still hoping to sell a thousand shirts. Maybe our advertising will work. But when we actually get to the end of May, we're gonna find that we only sold 850. So we need to calculate how much that would be. So we're gonna go over to our profit calculator and we're going to calculate that. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when we get to our profit calculator is that our costs are all gone. And that's because they were linked to our expense file and they were linked to those costs of the shirt per 10,000 and all those things we did in that last assignment. So we're going to have to fix those. Uh, so we our cost of shirts was two dollars and one cent. Our cost of ink. Was ten cents and our cost of transfers was a dollar one and we want all of those to be in currency all right so that's fixed up now so now we're going to calculate how much money we would have made if we sold 850 shirts using our profit calculator so we're going to type in 850 
and then that gives us our total income, which is $12,750, and we're going to copy that. So we're going to go back over to our income and our actual, and we're going to go paste, and we're going to go paste special. Since we don't want the equation, we want the actual values, and we'll paste that in there, and that gives us our new how much we made that month. Still less than what we wanted to, uh, but certainly more than last month. So that means that we're hopefully heading in the right direction. So now we've got to fix up our monthly budget. So we go over to our budget and we find that the numbers are already in there. Okay, we have our expenses, we have our revenue, and then we have our, what our actual was, which is uh, $10,660 is how much money we made in the month of May. But one thing that we haven't accounted for is the carryover of our budget from April. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ready for that by changing this from total to subtotal. And then we're going to have to add in our balance from last month. Make that bold. And we'll merge those cells together. And then we're going to put in our total. And we'll make that bold as well. Okay, so now we're going to have to go get our balance from last month. And we're going to then calculate our total. Okay, so we're going to bring in our balance from last month. And I got that from the April budget, okay? And that balance was negative $16,163. And so our new total is going to equal our subtotal plus our balance. Since it's a negative number, we're actually adding the negative number. And that gives us our new balance. And then, of course, we want to change that to accounting. And so now we have our new total. So we went from 16,000 in the hole to about 5,500 in the hole. And one last thing we're going to add to our file before we finish for today is we're going to try and keep track of our inventory. So we know when we're getting low on stock and when we're going to have to order more. So we know we initially started with 10,000 shirts but we've been selling shirts and it would be a good idea to keep track of how much we have in stock so that we know when it's time to order again. So we're gonna add something called an inventory calculator and we're gonna start with our initial inventory. Of shirts, ink and transfers. Which was all of our raw materials that we need to make our shirts and we'll make all of them bold and of course our initial inventory was 10,000 shirts enough ink to make 10,000 shirts so we'll just use that number and 10,000 transfers and then we're going to make one for current inventory make that bold and we're just going to use the same title, so I'm just going to copy them. And I'm going to paste them. And now we need to create an equation that's going to calculate how many shirts we have left based on how many we sold. So we're going to, over on the right-hand side here, create a new category called Shirt Sales. And then we'll add in the months, April and May, and then we'll add in what we sold. Now we need to, when we add these in, make sure that it's in a clear column. So I'm using column I for these numbers. Make sure there's nothing else in that number for an equation we're going to be using later. So we sold 340 in April and we sold 850 in May. And I'll just make these bold. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a subtotal of these and then subtract it from the numbers over here. So I'm going to create this running subtotal.
And I'm going to make that bold. And what it's going to do is it's going to equal sum of everything in the I column. So every month that I add in there, it's automatically going to add it to that sum. So I just click on the column at the top, the whole thing, press enter, and that gives me a running subtotal. So now all I have to do is subtract this from these numbers to get our current inventory. So it's going to be equals shirts minus our subtotal. And that gives us what we currently have in stock. And we use the same equation for these. So if I want to, I can copy this across. But it's not going to be correct because it's going to assume that we're moving all the information across horizontally. So we just go up and fix this. And that would be, uh, this would still be K rather than L. And then do the same thing for here. It changed that to M, but it should have been for K. Not sure if that's any quicker than actually just doing the equation again or not. But now we have the correct equation. So then if we sold, let's say, another 1,000 shirts in June, it automatically adds it to our subtitle and automatically deducts it from our current inventory so we know where we're at with stock. All right, that's everything for today, and we'll see you again next time.